meetings on ones. Today we're going to talk about what it means when you can't stop saying, I'm sorry, after escaping abuse. Help us get these messages out. Please subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and the notification bell. And please share these messages with others who could say a lot. What does it mean when you can't stop saying, I'm sorry, after escaping abuse? Heartfelt apologies can go a long way. I'm sorry what I said, you know, hurt your feelings. Polite apologies make us decent human beings. I'm sorry I was late to our meeting. But repetitive, nearly constant apologies for every little thing, or what psychologist Dr. Paige Carambio calls apologizing for existing, can actually be an after effect of trauma, a self-preservation technique survivors may think they still need to utilize in order to protect themselves. Dr. Carambio says it goes back to the first stage of being with an abuser, when the abuser is doing everything he or she can to tear the person down and make them feel completely worthless. Dr. Carambio, who works with survivors of domestic abuse in Beverly, Mass., says that hearing verbal derogation day in and day out can cause you to internalize those messages. And what carries over even after leaving an abuser, is this feeling that you need to apologize for every little thing, especially with a new partner. Stop using sorry as your shield, at saying, I'm sorry, at the drop of a hat. You mean that you have more healing to do, suggests Carambio. Carambio says that survivors may have used this as a protective behavior to avoid negative responses from a partner in the past. And it can be an automatic thing to try and avoid triggering a harmful response from an abuser. In women specifically, Carambio says she sees a need to over-apologize even when they weren't abused. She says there's a cultural notion that women shouldn't speak up and say what they're feeling, so they apologize for sharing their thoughts after they speak. There are different expectations for women. Women are encouraged to always be aware of other people's feelings and to try to manage others' responses. This over-apologizing comes from a more submissive and lower power kind of place. Things are changing for the better, though, but there are hundreds of years of cultural notions to diffuse. So how do you cut back on the apologizing? The first thing you can do is seek support. Survivors shouldn't feel like expressing their thoughts needs a disclaimer. If you find yourself over-apologizing, it's worth exploring a way to continue healing from your past. Carambio suggests talking to a trained domestic violence advocate about finding a support group of other survivors in your area. You know, that loss of self-esteem is so toxic to a survivor's health and well-being. Another thing you can do is self-pep talks. When you find yourself utilizing the I'm sorry for the tenth time in one day, you might want to try repeating some positive affirmations in your head. Even something as simple as, I'm worthy, I'm deserving of love, and I don't have to apologize. Just acknowledging that it happened may mean you won't be so quick to jump to the sorry next time, because you'll start to believe you really are a good person. So what do you say to the person who's apologizing all the time? It's really important not to get frustrated with a partner, family, or a friend, of uh, someone who over-apologized, says Columbia. Telling them repeatedly, don't apologize, might make a survivor feel more frustrated than they'll apologize for apo apologizing too much. Instead, she suggests, encourage them. Maybe not in reaction to them apologizing, but at other times. Have an open and honest conversation about how much that person means to you and how important they are in your life can help build up their self-esteem. The question is not if you encounter a victim of violence. The question before God is, what will you do when you do encounter them? You could be the person who saves a life. You are called. We are all called to be champions for justice. And those who suffer violence, they need to know that those who love them, and those who don't even know them, will step out and reach out to them to give them the help and the courage they need to leave before it's too late. Help us get these messages out. Please subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Hit the like button and the notification bell, and please share these messages with others. You could save a life. Now, if you are a victim of violence, I want you to listen to me. I want you to know that you are valued, you are loved, 
You are intelligent and you are worthy. God does not want you to suffer violence. He wants you to live free from violence and peace and tranquility. There is a way out. It's not your fault. Abuse is not love. You are not alone. And if you're a victim of violence, please reach out to somebody today. If you find yourself in a dangerous situation, call 911 for help. And if you know of someone who's suffering violence, tell the authorities. In our next episode, we're going to talk about going from surviving to thriving after abuse. Until then, God bless you.